great. <laughs> What up, it's your boy Ali, and welcome to Hip Hop Forever. Now, before we get started, make sure to add me on IG. I haven't been promoting that at all, but you know what they say, it's better late than never. I'll be doing some giveaways on IG. You can also request videos there as well. And yeah, that's it. Let's get started. Like most artists of her time, Tidra has a musical background. Her mom was a gospel singer and influenced her sound. Tidra grew up in the church. She always knew music was in her future and decided to use her upbringing to tell her story. Before Tidra Moses made it big, she was a wardrobe stylist working with big name stars such as Will Smith and Kelly Rowland. After breaking her leg on a video set, Tidra decided to stop taking half measures and pursue a career in music. This move proved to be beneficial for the young artist. She had connections. The father of her child was a musician and connected the artist with people in the music business. After that, it wasn't long before Tidra Moses signed her first deal with an independent record label called TVT Records. Tidra Moses had an interesting career. In the early 2000s, she dropped a single called Be Your Girl. Don't know if you got a girl. Don't mean no disrespect. This was her first real foray into the music industry. It got her recognized. However, her career didn't really take off until Dip It Low, a song she co-wrote with Christina Milian, took off. Over the years, Tidra's solo career has been through ups and downs. She started off with a modest bang, but sadly, her solo career isn't what it used to be. So the question is, what happened to Tidra Moses and what is she doing now? Let's dig in and find out. Okay, I want to know where you been at. I know you've been around, but I want to know what's been going on. Hustling, get money, girl. <laughs> what, else, what everybody else is doing. <laughs> In the early 2000s, Tidra Moses released her debut album, Complex Simplicity. The album debuted at number 168 on the Billboard 200. Needless to say, the album didn't sell a lot of records, but for an independent album, it did okay. But in this case, the sales don't reflect the quality of the project. Initially, Tidra Moses wanted to sing over hip-hop instrumentation. She thought that was her style, however that changed when she heard Aaliyah's Rock the Boat. After hearing the record, she was inspired by it and decided to make an album with a similar feel. I really wanted to be a chick that sung over hip-hop beats. What changed everything for me from wanting to be a person that sang over harder beats was Aaliyah's Rock the Boat. I didn't really want to come in and change nothing. I just wanted to make an album that sounded like Rock the Boat. Tidra Moses succeeded. A lot of the songs on the project have a Rock the Boat feel. Be Your Girl, Rescue Me, No More Tears, and I Think Of You are a few that come to mind. Just to put it out there, Last Day is my favorite track on the album. It's almost YOLO before Drake, but more soulful. The song asks the question, what would you do if today was your last day on earth? The drums are heavy and Tidra's voice matches the beat well. No More Tears is another banger. Needless to say, the album has a lot of dope tracks. Tidra Moses remained on TVT Records until the late 2000s. Through the label, she was supposed to release an album called The Young Lioness, however it didn't surface because the record label folded. The record label went belly up. Then I decided to change the songs on the album. I still wanted that title because I'm still The Young Lioness, but I didn't want some of those same songs anymore. Some of them I've kept, but I won't put that album out until it's completely what I want it to be. After the record label folded, Tidra went behind the scenes and worked as a writer. She worked with Macy Gray and Christina Milian, amongst others. Tidra's writing credits are very extensive. She's passionate about the craft. However, eventually, there came a time when Tidra wanted to get back in front of the mic. Now around 2011, Tidra Moses signed to Rick Ross's Maybach Music Group, making her the first lady of the label. Now this sounds all too familiar, doesn't it? Tidra Moses planned to release her second album, The Lioness, through the label, but decided to drop a mixtape first to build her buzz. Taking inspiration from Drake's So Far Gone, she created a mixtape full of album quality material. The attention that will be on this mixtape will be the same as the attention that will be on my sophomore album. I'm putting all my efforts to making this like Drake did. He made a mixtape so great that it could have been an album. That's what I want to do. I always said that I wanted to release The Lioness right away. I think this will help me out. Needless to say, The Lioness didn't come out on MMG. During an interview, Tidra let it all out and revealed the few things about her time on MMG. While on the label, she struggled to fit in. Wale, Ross and Meek all traveled together. They did things as a unit because they were men 
in a male-dominated industry. However, not being a part of the team made her feel isolated. I'm a girl, so therefore I'm not always in the mix of what they're doing and I'm a singer. They always travel in the same circle, whereas my hustle is in a different room. I hope it doesn't bother him that I stick to myself, but I don't think so. Sometimes I feel like I'm off to the side, but I don't think they think much of it because I'm not the only girl. There's also Audra. Clearly, Tidra Moses got left out. In 2011, MMG released a compilation album titled Self Made Volume 1. It was created to put the spotlight on the members of MMG. An interesting thing to note is that Wale, Ross and Meek Mill were all over this project, where Tidra Moses only appears on about two to three songs. I flew out to New York and just did some vocals on some records. I did a hook on a couple of records, but I didn't really do a song because it really was a rap album. And I'm not the kind of person that will force myself into a position, you know? It appears Tita didn't want to force herself into the group. Now here's another summary of her perspective. And I know that Meek, Wale, Pill, and Ross are really close. Being that I don't have a penis, it's really hard for me to be all up in that. Evidently, Tidra Moses didn't blow up on MMG because she isn't a rapper and because she's a female. Now, Tidra Moses' relationship with MMG reminds me of Chris John, the first R&B act to sign to Rockefeller. Chris John had the talent and made music that related to their generation. However, despite their best efforts to make a wave, they didn't make a huge impact on Rockefeller. One thing they realized really fast is that Rockefeller didn't know how to market them and would promote them in hip hop venues, completely ignoring the group's core fan base. You can learn more about this in my What Happened to Chris John video. Similarly, I don't think MMG knew what to do with Tidra Moses. She was a female, on a hip hop label. MMG dropped the ball, or maybe Tito wasn't blowing up on MMG, hence her departure from the label. Interestingly enough, during one of Rick Ross's interviews, he was asked why he doesn't sign many female artists, and he responded with the following, I never did it because I always thought that I would end up the female rapper, the business up. I'm so focused on my business. I gotta be honest with you, you know, she looking good and I'm spending so much money on the photo shoot, I got a couple of times. Now considering Tidra Moses was once the first lady of MMG, and in my opinion, she looks like a whole meal. So what was Rick Ross trying to say here? I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. After leaving MMG, Tidra signed to Shana Key Records, the home of every sunshine, Shantae Moore, and Music Soul Child. I signed with Shana Key Records. I'm supposed to be turning in the album in a couple of weeks. We want to set up everything properly, so I'm not totally sure about the dates but we are thinking about March slash April. Through Shana Key, Tidra released her second album, Cognac and Conversation. The album failed to chart on the Billboard 200, but it did okay independently. Now around 2019, 2020, Tidra Moses decided to re-release her debut album, Complex Simplicity, 15 years after it came out. The idea to re-release the album was sparked by a song she did with Kate Renata called Be Your Girl. After making the record, Tidra felt inspired and decided to add additional tracks to the album. And we had a remix that I did with Kay Trinata that we put out last year that's really blew up, like really huge. The project has four extra songs called Doing You, Carbonet Sauvignon, a remix of You Better Tell Her, and a reiteration of I Think of You. Out of all the new records, Doing You has to be my favorite. Here's what Tidra had to say about the re-release of her new album. In partnership with The Orchid, the 15-year anniversary Complex Simplicity will be available 9-27-19 on all streaming platforms, complete with original track listing and bonus tracks. A portion of the profits will be used to help single parents like myself. I cried out to God and he gave me Complex Simplicity to take care of my children. It definitely provided a way for me to tour, write for others, and received publishing performance checks, but I never received royalties for this album. The Orchid was thrill enough to re-release this album and give me an opportunity to get the residuals I deserve. As well, share with other parents that are in the same situation I was in years ago when I cried out to God for a way to provide for my sons. Now clearly, Tidra Moses got finessed. How was she 15 plus years in the game without ever receiving royalties for her first project? Something's not right there. As far as complex simplicity goes, it may not have blown up the way people expected it to, but in my opinion, it was ahead of its time and lacked a commercial push. However, luckily, people are still checking for the album and the inclusion of extra tracks was a brilliant move, in my opinion. Now, the question is, was Tidra's career a success? It depends. What is success to you? Did she sell half a million copies in the first week? No. 
If your measure of a successful artist depends on how much they sold, then Tidra Moses wasn't successful. In the year Complex Simplicity came out, Ciara dropped her debut album. It sold about 125,000 copies in the first week, setting the benchmark for other R&B artists to meet. If sales matter the most to you, Tidra's career was a failure. However, in this case, success could mean something different. Throughout her career, Tidra wrote for other artists and did most of her work behind the scenes. Like I said earlier, her writing credits are extensive and she's still able to get gigs from an album she put out over 15 years ago. Like I've been doing this for 15 years okay, that makes and sense. you would think that in 15 years my audience would dwindle. Mm -hmm. But it grows. Over the years, Tidra has put out a lot of mixtapes and singles. Most recently, she dropped a song with Salam Remy called Black Love. Tidra gets about 600,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, and her most popular song on the platform is Be Your Girl, the K Trinada edition. In my opinion, Tidra Moses was made to do this music thing. Complex Simplicity still has a cult following to this day, proving that sometimes all an artist needs is one good album. Like many artists before her, Tidra needed better promotion and a label that knew what to do with her. Maybe then she'd be a bigger artist than she is today. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. That's it for me, man. It's your boy Ali. What happened to Tidra Moses in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also, if you have any video requests, be sure to let me know as well. Make sure to follow me on IG. You can request videos there. And I'm also going to start doing some giveaways. New What Happened to video dropping next week. Until next time, peace.